Well, hey guys, Thorzax here. One of the things I was on my mind, and I got into a few chats with different people about it and that sort of thing, and we were talking about trigger quality, okay? Trigger quality or trigger pull or um, the difference between having a heavy, a just right, or a too light trigger, okay? Uh, really has a lot to do with the style of shooting that you're doing. And the reason why I bring that up. Um, years ago, I sent this to Bowen Gunworks. And just to show you guys, not being incompetent here, there is no rounds in there. All right. And when I sent it to Bowen, I wanted a silhouette trigger put on it. Okay. Now, I'll show you guys something. The trigger on this gun is extremely light. You don't want your finger anywhere near that trigger unless you're aiming. I mean, you have committed to your aim. That's when you bring your trigger finger around and you start your commitment to your trigger pull. And I'm telling you what, this baby is light. I mean, it is extremely light. This, this gun was intended to be shot in silhouette, where you have a lot of time between shots. So when you, you know, you got the gun, pull the trigger back, you aim, squeeze it off, you got recoil, right? So when you come back down, you align the sights back into where you want to shoot, pull the hammer back, like I said, have your trigger finger out of the way, get your aim on there pull the trigger again. This gun is strictly a target gun. It was set up as a target gun. That's it. I don't even think I would take this hunting because of the, how light that trigger is. It is an extremely light trigger. But this is set up for silhouette shooting. Okay? You have a lot of time in between, you know, your intervals. You're taking your shots. So when you got your sights lined up, and you're focusing on front sight, you can get in there and start to finesse that trigger and drop that hammer. Okay, so wanted to kind of go into that. Another pistol that I've been playing around with is my Model 10. Um, as you guys can see, nothing in there. All right. I'll tell you what, I really like these Packmeyer presentation grips. They really fit my hand nice. I mean, they're uglier than sin, but man, they're old school, but man, they work. I mean, that's just the way it is, man. You could just, you got the girth right there. I mean, these are set up perfect. Now, I ordered a Wolf spring kit for this pistol for the k &L frames, and it came with a 15, a 14, and a 13 pound spring. So, what I did... It also came with the new, you know, mainspring, which is your, you know, leaf spring back here. And the way it is on Smith's is that on a Smith you have a, a screw down here, you know, at the bottom of the grip on the frame. And you can adjust that in or out to adjust the amount of tension you want on the leaf spring. Okay. Smith did that so you can fine tune that hammer fall. Okay, it does have some influence on your trigger pull, but on a Smith pistol, the way that you um, the way that you adjust that trigger pull is by putting in a rebound spring. So when you pull back, you know when you pull back on the on the hammer, and she cocks, you know that if that that rebound spring is what you're pushing against right here to drop the hammer okay now I put the uh, I put the 14 pound in here and what I found with that 14 pound spring is that 14 pound spring is too light and I also went ahead and used the new uh, reduced power um, mainspring in it and I ran that screw all the way in and it it's still to me too light 
And it goes back to what I was saying earlier. It depends on what kind of shooting you're going to do. Okay, now if I was going to take this, you know, uh, pistol to a PPC match, you're going to shoot that PPC match. Most of the match you're going to shoot is with two hands. You've got a double-handed hold, okay? And, you know, you're going to pull the trigger all the way through. You do not want that front sight to move at all when you're when you're committed to your trigger. Just like that. Nice and smooth. Alright? Smith & Wesson's, uh, in my opinion, and uh, you know what? It really isn't my opinion. It's actually the opinion of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the world, okay, believe that Smith & Wesson's, for the money, what you're buying, engineered there, is the best trigger that you can get. They're the easiest to work on. Um, they're the easiest to get parts for. Um, you take the, you know, you take the side plate off the side here, and, you, and it exposes everything. The pistol smith can go ahead and cock that, and then look at that, and he can actually set up a camera in slow motion and actually drop the hammer, and in slow motion he can see all the little parts working together in there. You can't do that with other pistols that everything is from the bottom or you have to take it out or whatever. You you, you have to do it by feel. So Smith & Wesson is a lot easier to work on. Um, so the trigger that, that's in it right now would be perfect in my opinion you know for like a PPC gun where I'm going to be using a two-handed hold. But as far as a bullseye gun you don't want this type of trigger. You want a heavier trigger than this, because with bullseye, you put, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna line up on the, you, you know, you're gonna line up on your bowl, okay? You're gonna look at your front sight, you cock the pistol, and you're gonna shoot when when the target turns. Now, in rapid fire, you've got. 10 seconds to shoot five shots at 75 feet. Yeah, you know, that's at, at 25 yards. So when the gun goes off, okay, it's going to come up, all right? You're going to have a little bit of recoil. So when you come back down, you're going to cock that trigger again. And you don't have a lot of time to get your finger in there, you know, and take those like long steps you're gonna have your trigger finger basically in the trigger guard and the problem is with shooting like that is that you have to have some sort of resistance there on that trigger so that when you come down you actually have to commit to the trigger pull okay and with this trigger right here I can't feel it enough on my trigger finger Okay, so, so what, what could happen is that I could, you know, cock the pistol, shoot. When I'm coming back down, I put my finger back on the trigger, and boom, I shoot while I'm still coming down. And that could throw the shot, you know, high into the bowl. And that happens more than, you know, people think when they do trigger jobs, when they try to shoot fast with, you know, shooting single action. You've got to have a certain amount of resistance on that trigger before you commit to your trigger pull okay so so you have that rest there you have that rest of your your trigger finger on the trigger and then you're pulling it through okay once you committed to the the trigger pull itself you know you pull it straight through you don't stop or anything like that you pull it straight through and there really isn't much stopping on a smith <laughs> once once you've committed to the trigger pull it, it pretty much drops a hammer right there i mean uh they really are fine fine pistols they are really nice well engineered well made um so anyway i wanted to kind of go through that um if you got a smith um go ahead and buy the different spring kits you can get um I think the K and L and uh, yeah the K and L frame, actually the J K and L, they come with um, the springs uh, for the rebound, and they also uh, it it also comes with one for the the 
the mainspring. I'm going to change the mainspring out here back to the stock one because I think this mainspring might be a little bit too tight, uh, too light. Uh, that's where that's where part of this is coming from with the trigger. So I've got that ran all the way in, and I I, I feel that that is just a little bit too light for me. Um, yeah, so try the different springs. One thing I will say, putting the um, rebound spring uh, in the rebound guide itself and that sort of thing, that can be a real bear. There's a trick to it, and you got to use a real small screwdriver, or you can go to Burnell's and you can buy the tool, or if you're crafty enough, you can go ahead and take an old screwdriver and you can make uh, a pusher by bending it around and then filing the little you know notch that you need in order to push that spring in there and I've never had uh, a real need to do that uh, on my you know because I don't do that many uh, spring change outs on my pistols <coughs> and <coughs> and I've pretty much got it down where when I uh, when I do do them I can do them with a the little screwdriver thing I know this I know the, the trick to it so anyway I hope that was some help to some of you guys out there um, uh, I know that, uh, you know, across the United States now, we're getting a little more freedom now to go out to our ranges and things like that and shoot. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, going to the range right now. They haven't been able to shoot for a while. So getting a lane or, you know, getting a place to shoot uh, on the on the firing line can be, uh, can be challenging. You know, if you get there and there's a crowd of people, well, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to shoot for quite a while. Um... My range has not opened yet. So it's open to shotgun, but that's more of a game and more of a controlled thing, and they can practice their social distancing. And, you know, it's only open between these hours. That's it. So, uh, anyway, I have been casting up these. I casted up a whole bunch of these uh, semi wide cutters. I'm going to get that going here pretty soon. I have my uh, other star unit down at Magma, and I'm having some mods done to it, and uh, they're going to send it back to me. Uh, and that's pretty much about brings you up to date. So anyway, that's my video. This is Thor Zax, and hey, uh, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.